Hello, my shabby loving friends. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new here, my name is Becky and welcome to Kinda Shabby. I enjoy sharing all things DIY and decorating. And if you enjoy those things too, then stick around. If you like what you see, please subscribe, like, and comment. Now, in today's video, we've got a couple of projects that are related to organization in the craft room. First up, I'm going to be making over my memo board. Some of this ribbon has just given up the ghost. And now I want to lighten that up a bit and give it that oh-so-shabby-chic look. So we're going to be freshening up our French memo board. Next up... Is your ribbon and lace storage in a sad state of affairs like this too? I mean, seriously, this is not so chic. So we're going to be giving a shabby chic makeover to our ribbon and lace storage as well. So let's go ahead and get these projects started. To begin this project, we've got to deconstruct this board. I will be removing all of the buttons and the ribbon and then once that is all removed, I'm also going to remove, this is a piece of burlap fabric here. I'm going to be replacing that with another cute fabric. Then I'm going to paint this area here in the Waverly Chalk Paint Color Ballet Slipper. So let's go ahead and get this taken apart. In order to save a little bit of time, I have done a few steps off camera. Now we have painted the border and I left a three inch border on my cork and I have measured out my fabric to be a quarter inch on each side larger than that cork that I left blank in the middle. Now some people when they make their memo boards, they actually cover it with batting. But what I found is if I want to put an object on my board that is thick, that push pin is not gonna go through the batting, through the object that I want, and then hold securely in place. I just like to do the cork with either paint or fabric or a combination of both. Now what I did to adhere my fabric, I used this spray adhesive. It is a stencil spray, but I was out of my easy tack, so this is what I had to use. And I did do that outside on an old Amazon box because you do not want to get stencil adhesive in your house. So once I sprayed the back of my fabric, then I let that sit and tack up for about two minutes. Then I took my Bondo spreader after I centered it up. Don't go at it like that because if you do just like this, you're going to make wrinkles in your fabric. You want it to lie almost flat and just rub that back and forth over your surface to make sure that that has adhered very well to your cork. We're going to come back and we're going to glue down some decorative trim all around the outside. And then we're also going to be gluing down our ribbons in our crosshatch pattern. I'm going to adjust the camera angle and bring you in closer so you can see exactly how I put down the ribbons in the crosshatch pattern and then also do the decorative trim on the outside of the fabric. I am going to be using pink and white ribbon that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I start by going this corner to this corner and then we're just going to glue each of these edges in place. So now we're going to glue up in this corner here and glue down this corner. What we're going to do with our white is go from the middle to the middle here, the middle to the middle here, and then same thing here to here, here to here. To make sure I keep things centered, I'm just going to take my quilt ruler here, take my water-soluble marker, and just put a little dot right here 
to let me know that that is my center here and same thing up here at the top. And since I know that this is 16 inches, I'm going to mark this at 8 inches here and here. And then we're just going to do the same thing here to here, here to here, and here to here. I'm going to go back in and add just a tiny amount up underneath each of the ribbons to secure them in place. So just a tiny dot of glue underneath where each of the ribbons cross over just to hold them and your items whatever you plan to be storing and putting onto your board that it'll stay in place. Now we're ready to trim off all of our excess ribbon here and then we're going to add a decorative trim all the way around the outside of our fabric here. I chose this adorable rickrack. How cute is that? So I'm just going to start on one end and glue my rickrack all the way around my edges here. Now to add some more cuteness to the middle here, I could have used these pretty buttons. They're just gorgeous and I got these off of Amazon and I will link these in the description box below for you. Those would be really cute. However, because this has these cute little white polka dots in the fabric, I'm just going to use these little pom-poms and I'm going to glue the pom-poms onto each of the intersections of our ribbon. And because in shabby chic, more is more in my opinion, I am going to be taking this gorgeous trim here. I'm going to cut these layers apart and I will be gluing them all around to the outside edges. I just think that that is going to be just the perfect finishing shabby chic touch to my message board. But look how cute that is so far. I think that is adorable. Now that our message board is completed, I have two Pinterest inspired lace and ribbon organization hacks to show you. The first one is so simple. I saw this on Pinterest and thought, why didn't I think of that myself? All you're going to need are some large craft sticks, a jar large enough for your craft sticks to go into, your unruly hoard of lace, and some straight pins. And it is just as simple as winding that around your craft stick. If you start here and just keep twisting it until you get to the top, it just makes the neatest, cutest little organization for all of that lace. So I know what I'm gonna keep doing over the weekend. This is just so quick and so easy. I'm going to tuck that end, take my straight pin, put that in there, drop it in my jar. How cute and quick and easy was that? For our next tip, we are going to be organizing our ribbon on these beautiful ribbon boards. Be still my heart. I will show you how I made these. This is cut with my scroll saw on some scrap Luan that I had hanging out in the garage. So we're going to head out to the garage, cut some of these out, and then we're going to spray paint them and put these decoupage papers on. And I cannot wait to show you just how simple that is using a scroll saw. I also have some tips for you if you do not have a scroll saw, what other materials that you can use to achieve this same beautiful look. Because this wood is prone to splintering, I always wear gloves when I am working with my scroll saw. 
For my particular brand of scroll saw, this is the on-off switch for the light. And then this one controls the speed of the blade while this one actually turns the unit on. I've traced my design and I'm just going to begin by cutting these two pieces apart. I'm going to cut out today. I've cut these out. I'm going to take my sander and I'm going to smooth those all down and then I'm going to give them a good coat of spray paint. Well, my pieces have all been painted and I have them out here waiting on them to dry. An old cardboard box makes an excellent paint booth. I also enjoy using this spray gun grip. It really helps any project requiring spray paint to go on quickly and smoothly. So let me show you where the inspiration for these beautiful boards came from. This was found on Shabby Art Boutique and Carrie Ann English. It is her blog that I've followed for quite a while and she has just the most beautiful, exquisite things on her blog. She has this under her Vintage Lace Boards project. So you get this template to print out. And then you also get these beautiful images to put, and she shows you how she has done that. You get these beautiful images to put on your boards. Now, if you do not have a scroll saw, what can you do? Well, I've made a couple examples here to show you using this foam board. The foam board itself is a very economical piece to use. It's also nice and sturdy, but the edges are, it's a little difficult to cut, a little hard to work with. I couldn't get straight, nice, even edges. So this is not my personal preference, but this is a good alternative. This is gorgeous scrapbooking paper that I cut out using this template and just Mod Podged it onto a cracker box. Now it does bow up just a little bit. It doesn't lie perfectly straight. Um, it's definitely flexible, but just for some quick and easy ribbon or lace storage, this is a perfect alternative to using the wood. I have two different sizes here. She only gives you one size. I have some thicker ribbons that I knew I wanted the throat of this to be taller. So hubby says, let's cut it in half, raise it up as high as you need it to be, tape it down on poster board, and cut it out. And so that's what I've done. So now that I have shown you some of these alternatives, I'm going to show you how I decorated these gorgeous boards using these Tim Holtz decoupage papers that I ordered off of Amazon. And I will also have these linked down below for you. So let me adjust the camera angle and bring you in closer so you can get a better look. I decoupaged onto these boards. Look how pretty that is with these decoupage papers. And these come six inches wide this way. But this thing is six yards long. There is a lot of decoupage paper in there. I have one that has the florals and the other that has the birds. And this is actually sold in a set. And I just thought that they were just gorgeous because, you know, I love me some shabby flowers and I love me some birds. Take my roll and decide where I want my image to fall. And I could have just decoupaged up here at the top because once that's all wrapped with ribbon, you're not going to see the whole board anyway. So you do what is whatever is your personal preference. And I'm just going to trim out just a little bit and trim off my excess here. 
and these are nice beautiful thin papers especially made for decoupage roll this back and apply my mod podge but making sure that i have a nice coat that is also evenly spread so now i'm going to start in the middle with my spreader and just nice even pressure spread that image out on this board flip this over and again we're going to go around these edges here get a nice even moderate layer of our mod podge and now starting in the middle taking my bondo spreader and just spreading that with nice pressure but not so firmly that I would tear the paper. Then I'm going to take my finger and just run it around the edges of the board here. And you have two choices when it comes to removing the excess of your paper here. You can wait until it dries and then sand it off. But because this is a nice thin decoupage paper, what I'm going to be doing is taking water and a paintbrush that has a nice flat straight edge here and I'm going to take the brush I'm going to wet the edge of the paper all the way around following the outline of the board as I'm wetting the paper then just keep wetting it and use the side of your brush and the side of your board. And you can just see as I go around the edges that that paper is just gonna come right off. And look how quickly and easily it just removes that excess paper. So we're just going to smooth those edges down very gently with our fingers. And then we're gonna come back over the top with our Mod Podge, making sure to focus on those edges. And that's it. Look how gorgeous. These would make perfect gifts for anyone who is a crafter or a seamstress in your life. These are just so beautiful.
Thank you so much for spending a bit of your time here with me today. I truly appreciate you. Come back next week for more kind of shabby, but always chic, crafty inspirations. Until then, my friends, be blessed.